something a little bit different is I've been running a business called Walk the Talk for 40 years. And we're a very um, reasonably successful boutique publishing company. And since I've retired, I decided I wanted to share some of the things that I've learned about publishing and writing, et cetera, with other people. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm not looking for any revenue. Uh, I'm doing it for free. And I'm looking to meet people that want to take their aspiration to write a book into some kind of uh, conclusion. So I want to break this into three segments. One, who am I and where have I been and credentializing my experience in writing and publishing. Two, describing some of the components that are necessary to take your idea of publishing into a final product. And then three questions, opportunities to ask, et cetera. I also have my business card here, a little more information if you'd like that as you, as you leave. First question to you, how many of you have written and published a book? Okay, two, three people, four people, five people. Uh, how many of you are interested in writing a book? Okay, that, that's pretty typical. Um, it's a very challenging process. And it is, has many, many dimensions of uniqueness, many different pathways to follow. I haven't followed every pathway. Our publishing company uh, publishes how-to handbooks for organizations. Our customers are, for the most part, not individuals, but are rather institutional buyers. That's our boutique this. I have personally written and co-authored 28 books, and I'm finishing up my 29th book, and my co-author of that book is right over there, Trish Taylor. And the book is titled, I just realized my printer ran out of red ink. <laughs> book comes out in two months. It's called Respect in the Workplace. And it's been a delight to work with her. And um, again, it comes out in two months. And interestingly, by coincidence, the first book I did 29 years ago with uh, my good friend Al Lucia, who's here today, uh, 29 years ago, I can't believe that, and since in, in between that time, uh, I've been involved with either authoring or co-authoring 27 other books. Walk the Talk was relatively successful. Here's the original copy. And to the point where we actually rebranded our company. The actual official name of our company is Performance Systems Corporation. But because of this, we rebranded our company to the Walk to Talk Company. Been translated into a number of languages. The most unique is Icelandic. And I actually spoke in Reykjavik about 22 years ago in February. And it is freaking cold in Reykjavik. But that's pretty unusual to have a book translated into Icelandic. Uh, again, most of our books are short, small handbooks, how-to topics for people moving from a peer level in an organization to a supervisor level, um, a book called Ethics for Everyone, which has been relatively successful. Interesting story about this. About um, when it came out like 12 years ago, that same day we had two orders from two different organizations for the same book for 100 copies. Well, that's kind of unusual, the same book, 100 copies. So I asked our customer service person, well, who were the two groups that bought it? One was um, Caesars Palace Casino in Las Vegas. Two was Billy Graham Ministries. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, everyone has ethical issues, regardless of, of what you do. Um, I have moved to almost full retirement. Uh, we have five people in our company. My two daughters, one lives in Lafayette, Louisiana, and one lives in Boone, North Carolina, do most of the day-to-day uh, -day work. Uh, I still do some writing, uh, et cetera. But again, what I'm interested in doing is helping other, other people move from, I want to write a book, to I actually have a book of some sort in my hand. I remember, oh, 29, 30 years ago, Alice asked me one day, we were working together, he said, do you want to write a book? And I said, I want to have written a book. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. Already finished, published, making lots of money. Um, what's interesting is, is I have, I'm, 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 I've lived off, I've stopped doing speaking and training about 15, 20 years ago. So myself and the other five people in our company live off the revenues of book writing and publishing, uh, which is kind of unusual because publishing has become a very challenging task since Amazon. They changed the rules completely. That's why we only have one major chain bookstore left, Barnes & Noble. And now that they've gotten into uh, print on demand and their own publishing house, our book for the first time, Respect in the Workplace, is being done through Amazon, even though we're the publisher, 
We're working through Amazon this time for the first time because they've improved the quality of the books. They've rec recruited, they've improved the uh, time between ordering and uh, receiving the books. And they also have it then connected to Kindle. They have it connected to page reads. They have it connected to other revenue sources. So like many other industries, Amazon have changed the rules completely. I'm also involved currently with helping two other people uh, that are here today, thank you uh, for being here, uh, with their book. One is uh, Dr. Jack Keller, who's right here. He's a clinical psychologist and also a good friend. And he wanted to create a legacy book. Uh, he's retiring this year after, I'm not going to tell you how many years. Many years. Many, 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 many years have passed. And the book is about unusual occurrences or unexpected events that have happened in his uh, a practice work. So he came up with 12 different events that you didn't learn in psychology school that actually happened to him as a legacy product, and he's giving it away for free. When I ask the qu first question, there's three basic components of writing a book. And the first question is, why do you want to write a book? And you cannot imagine the unique answers you get to that question. Second person here is Julie Still Rowland, who's also a good friend, and she just came up with a topic and a title and I'll be honest with you, I'm incredibly excited about it. And she asked me to help her with the book, even though she won't need much help because she's written and published two books on her own. But you know, another uh, person's ideas and perspectives along the way is always helpful. There's always learning opportunity. So I have three. I have the, my oldest co-author, my newest co-author, and two people I'm working to help them bring their book to fruition. There are four basic components of taking the notion I want to write a book to fruition. First is answering clearly the question, why do you want to write a book? Jack's answer, for example, is a legacy product for free about his experiences. Trish and I's answer for the book we're doing now is to make a lot of money. <laughs> so very different objectives. Julie's answer is to make a lot of money and to also create speaking and training opportunities. But you would not believe, a, a, a mutual friend of ours, Al Lucia and another guy named Brian Guru, did a book on employee engagement for us. And when Brian retired from Caterpillar, he was an expert on employee engagement. So he wrote a book, and it's helped him you know, with his next level. He's now writing, um, I'm happy, three or four? Uh, three so far, one forthcoming. Okay. He's writing a book for his grandchildren that is um, um, with graphics and what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, drawings. Illustrate. Yes, illustrate. Yes. Uh, about the experiences that they had with their grandparents. Uh, 10, 12 pages. Each book is going to cost him a couple thousand dollars. He doesn't care. That's not why he's doing it. So everyone has a very, very, very different reason. And sometimes when I ask that question, why do I want to write a book, it tells me I maybe can help them. If they tell me I want, to, I want to feed all the starving children of the world and correct all the Mideast problems and get everyone engaged in Washington, I take another sip of my pina colada and say, well, that's interesting. Uh, I have a nice life. Not really say that. But you have to have the first question, a good answer. That's the first question I ask people. Secondly, to understand how you get your thoughts and experiences or desires to some medium, ebook, written, whatever, or whatever. Third is the formatting and the construct of the book, from the cover to the layout to editorial work, et cetera. And that's all the, the fundamental characteristics of the design, et cetera. And the fourth, which sometimes is forgotten by people, how, how do you get it to people's attention? When our book on respect in the workplace comes out, we have a very, very comprehensive plan on how we get it to the marketplace. Jack's plan is to give it away for free and encourage people to pay it forward. Everyone has very different plans, but sometimes people just think, well, I'll just find a publisher in New York that wants it, and I'll sit back and just cash the checks. OK. And at the same time, that next morning, feed all the starving children of the world and correct the meetings problems, et cetera. So again, my objective, I'm looking for a select number of people, as opposed to my full-time job. Um, even Jim Sparks, who I first talked to, he said, well, aren't you eventually going to look to make some money? I said, no, <laughs> I don't want, I'm very comfortable, I'm happy, I'm 73 years old, I have a wonderful family, I have two wonderful daughters who run my business, I have six wonderful grandchildren, I have a happy life. But I just really want to help other people. It's fun for me, 
it, it's, it's stimulating for me. I have something I can offer. There's many things I can't do. But publishing has a lot of, again, I've worked with two outside publishers. Our company has published 250 books. I've written 29 books. So I have a lot of experiences in certain avenues. And there's some tough questions you have to ask and answer. First, why do you want to write a book? Uh, there's got to be some end state. And that's one of the first things I help people try to understand. Why do I want to write a book? And then to share with them what are the different components and the pros and cons of each component, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The most interesting book, here's our bestseller book, <clears throat> called 212, The Extra Degree. We published this with a gentleman in the East Coast, and we retained derivative rights to the book. We worked with another publisher in Chicago to sell different versions of the concept, and in total, we've sold 1.2 million copies of this book. In fact, here's a true story. Someone asked me a couple weeks ago, what's the range of books that you published that you sold? What's the number? It goes from 1.25 million copies to 174. I have one book where I have 5,000 copies sitting on the shelf in Peoria, Illinois, and we printed 5,000 copies, so we have 4,800 <laughs> left. It's never sold, never will sell, and everything else is somewhere in between. And you gotta make the good and bad. You learn from that, and we take a lot of the learning from what didn't work to what has worked. One of the things we found is the title of your book is very important. Jack's book title, not 100% defined, is something like Expect the Unexpected. Um, which was different than I originally had. Which is different, <laughs> and we, we meet every three weeks at um, Jimmy Buffett's place uh, and have lunch and, and share uh, uh, sto more stories. I've learned as much from Jack as maybe he's learned from me. So it's great for me too, it's very rewarding. So again, my objective, my business card is there, is to you or anyone that you know that would be interested in talking to someone who has published and written a number of books, perhaps I can help them. I want to start with a phone call. Uh, first email me, we set up a phone call, talk for 15 minutes, and then decide if it makes sense. If I have some you know, uh, experiences that could be helpful to you, then we'll meet for an hour or two. Where it goes beyond that, you know, who's to tell? Um, it went beyond that with Jack, it went beyond that with Julie, and I'm looking for a couple other people uh, that I could work with. Again, there's nothing hidden here. <laughs> Just I've had a lot of experience over the last 30 years, and perhaps they could be helpful to people. So that's basically, oh, one other thing. Here's another book that we sold over half a million copies on. It's my ultimate favorite book I've done, Leadership Secrets of Santa Claus. <laughs> Great title. And that, that's the original book which we published. It was out for eight years. And then a Chicago publisher wanted to expand it and give them the rights to it, which I did last year, and they re-released it again. But again, title is quite important, extremely important. You capture people's attention with the title. The subtitle is your promise, what the book will deliver. And the next most important thing is either the table contents or the back page. And you have to know all those historical components as you start. And that's what I think I can offer people, some things we learned. What made the 174 <laughs> book sale? I lost $20,000 on that book. I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars and elsewhere. So I've had the good, the bad, or the ugly, and everything in between. And you keep on trying to learn from the mistakes you've made too, and keep on learning. One thing I learned is the importance of the title. That's why Jack's title of Expect the Unexpected immediately gets your attention. And then he talks about 12 case studies he had with different clients over the years that were unexpected. He didn't learn in psychology school 101, but being in practice for many, many years. So that's my pitch. Questions of any sort? Well, yeah, Carol's in the process of writing a book about her mother. Okay. And she's from Brooklyn, New York. And Yo! <laughs> Forget about it. The title is Joan of Brooklyn, which I think is a great title. Uh -huh. But she's in the process she of writing. 